Hey dog nerds, if you're looking for a dog but suffer from allergies or have a family member who suffers, you might be wondering which dog breeds are hypoallergenic. Michael, why don't you tell them? Well, there aren't any, unfortunately, that are truly hypoallergenic. There have been independent, you know, scientific research that's looked into this, and unfortunately, there aren't any. Yeah, that's right. There aren't any truly hypoallergenic dog breeds. And I know we've interviewed some people on this show who've said their breed is hypoallergenic. That is a misnomer. Um, But there are some breeds that are less likely to aggravate those with allergies. Yeah, and I think there's some on this list that eh, we might Questionable. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we'll we'll ask you who have those breeds. Um, So before we talk about the breeds, let's talk about... um, The allergens normally come from dander, which from our research, it attaches to the hair. So you can see why shedding dogs would be more of a problem for people with allergies. Um, But if you do like a quick online search for hypoallergenic dog breeds, um, you'll you'll find some breeds that um, will really... Kind of shock you. I mean, Shock you. (laughs) Yeah, like I know we were shy. We kind of laughed a little bit too. When you just do a search here, um, I've got forty-two dog breeds listed, and as I'm going through them, some of them make sense. But then, lo and behold, I see the Border Terrier. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't imagine. Now we have had people that are friends of ours or our acquaintances that have Border Terriers. Like, hey, my Border Terrier doesn't shed, and I will say that Strider does not shed as much as Finley and Riley. But that's also, I think, because she doesn't seem to have much of an undercoat. Correct. So, but she still sheds. Yeah. And um, and one thing we want to say about all of this is that every single dog is going to be different, right? Mm -hmm. So there's breed standards and things that are typical of certain breeds. But as any of you know, who've had more than one of the same breed, personalities, barking, shedding, it's really varies quite a bit. So, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so don't always trust the list that comes up from the search engine because, like I said, um, a lot of terriers on that list, like Cairn Terriers and uh, Welsh Terriers. I know Welshes have a little bit of a different coat, but Scottish Terriers, these guys have undercoats. So for those of you who have like Westies and Scotties, and I, I want to know, did, did, did those dogs shed a lot like a Border Terrier? Um, Yorkshire Terrier is on this list. I grew up with Yorkies. Yorkies are not typically a shedding breed and they have more of a hair, uh, than a fur, if that makes sense. They don't have an undercoat. However, in saying that my best friend in high school, she was allergic to dogs and she would get agitated sometimes when she came over, not all the time, but sometimes. So I think a lot of it too has to do with the skin. And uh, then the hair distributes the dander in the air when they shed. The skin of the dog or the skin of the person? Skin of the dog. Yeah, I also think um, based on the study, they said they actually found more dander in the dogs that were hypoallergenic than those that weren't. But I think also it it depends on, you know... How they shed. How they shed and, yeah. yeah. So... um, If you want to hop over to the AKC, they have a list of dog breeds that are um, less allergenic. Um, The AKC even also states that there is no true 100% hypoallergenic dog breed or mixes, um, but there are some that are less allergenic. Some of the most well-known ones, I would say, are poodles, not mixes, not any of these doodles because they're mixed with other breeds that do have right. allergens. Right. So uh, purebred poodles, um, Yorkies, Maltese, uh, Bichon Frises, you know, dogs like that, um, where they have more of a hair than a, than a fur and an undercoat and all that stuff. So, but just be aware, you know, we worked with somebody who had a Maltese and uh, just, I don't know if she was producing an allergen because we're not uh, allergic, but she shed. You know, we yeah. would find long, fine white hairs on the chair that she sat on. But some of those breeds are good breeds to look at. Hop on over to the AKC to find a full list um, of their 
recommendations and then just do your searches. Yeah. So, you know, we want you to research your dogs, uh, your breeds and AKC is just one of the resources you can go to. There's other ones. There's obviously Facebook, uh, pages for these, these, um, uh, different breeds. So I, I would highly suggest, and I think we would highly suggest that you really look into that. And if you're prone to allergies, um, well, you know, what do you do then if you get a, if you get a, yeah, I think if you're prone to allergies, you've got to go meet these breeds. And if I were somebody who had bad allergies, I would probably not go for a puppy. I would look to adopt an older dog. Like Mm -hmm. say, say I decided on a poodle. I would look for like maybe a two-year-old poodle, go meet the dog and see if I had any reaction to that specific dog. The reason I say that as much as you know, you want a puppy. What if that puppy's bloodline's a little bit different from the poodle that you met and didn't have a reaction with? Well, not only that, you want to, you just you saying that you want to meet that puppy where there are no other dogs because you don't want to influence, um, or the, contaminate, or the, contaminate the, <laughs> the, the experiment the test area. The, yeah. So you want to maybe meet at a park or, or, or at someone's house where you're, or maybe if you can do the yard and the house so that you, you can see how you react and, and spend some time there. Don't just 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out. I'd probably say, Hey, can I, can I at least visit for an hour and spend some time? And now you know yourself. So you know if you're going to break out immediately, you know what, what you need to look for. Something interesting is I knew somebody who was allergic when dogs licked them. And that's just completely different. So there are so many kinds of allergies, but we just want you to know, let, let's bust that myth. There is no 100% hypoallergenic dog breed, but there are breeds that are going to be less likely to agitate you. Do your research, go visit the breed. And like Michael said, I think one of the best ways to do your research, join Facebook groups for the breeds you're interested in. Let them know why you want to join, that you don't have the breed, but you want to learn about the breed. It is a great way to get mm-hmm. real life information from actual dog moms and dogs out, dog dads out there. Subscribe. It's yeah. just right down here. Just, you know, hit that little subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like this content. Also, if you hit the notification bell, it'll let you know when we got a video coming out. And just so everybody, it'll sneak peek. We got some really interesting videos coming up. We sure do. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.